Welcome back everybody, still day three of CPR. This particular video is brought to you by Mu K, the coefficient of kinetic friction. And as promised earlier, right now we're gonna take a look at the vector nature of momentum. And what we're gonna do today is not very heavy mathematically at all. There's gonna be no assignment associated with it. It's actually a bit of a history lesson. Uh, it's going to show you how basic high school physics, the law of conservation of momentum, was used to discover something quite high tech, these little tiny particles called neutrinos. And you probably know that besides protons, neutrons, and electrons, there's a whole soup of subatomic particles out there. There's gluons, muons, bosons, quarks, which are really cool. They have str strange names. Some of them are called up, some of them are called down, some of them are called charm, uh, some of them are actually called strange, I believe. Uh, and of course, there's also these very, very small particles called neutrinos, which basically make an electron look about the size of a jet airliner. Uh, now, before we talk about uh, how neutrinos were discovered, you should know a little bit about uh, radiation and radioactivity. Uh, of course, certain substances are radioactive. Some radioactive substances, they give off alpha particles, and an alpha particle is just a helium nucleus. Uh, some radioactive substances, they give off beta particles, and a beta particle is nothing more than an electron. Uh, some radioactive substances, they give off gamma rays, which are very similar to x-rays. And a bunch of physicists, they were actually studying radiation. Uh, they were sitting around and they were watching a radioactive atom and they were expecting it to emit a beta particle, an electron. And here's what they thought they would see. They thought they would see the atom move off in one direction and the electron move off in the exact opposite direction. And to be perfectly honest, uh, they could actually see these things. Not that they could see the atom and the electron themselves, uh, but this was taking place in a cloud chamber. A cloud chamber is just a small container uh, that is super saturated with water vapor. It's so saturated with water vapor that if the slightest disturbance, okay, uh, like an atom moving through it or even an electron moving through it, if a slight disturbance like that takes place, you'll get a trail of condensation. So yeah, in their cloud chamber, they are expecting to see, well, uh, an atom moving off in one direction, an electron moving off in the exact opposite direction. Okay. Uh, and of course, uh, if you look at the uh, conservation momentum, okay, well, when the atom is just sitting there, its total momentum is zero. And when the atom emits the electron, well, the atom has the momentum in that direction. The electron has the momentum in the exact opposite direction. And these two momentums, they cancel each other out. So the total momentum uh, uh, after the emission or, or the explosion, the electron, the atom blowing apart, if you will, the total momentum after the explosion well, these two things cancel, still zero. That's what's supposed to happen, right? Momentum is supposed to be conserved. That's what the scientists were expecting. But here's what they actually saw inside their cloud chamber. Uh, the electron moved off in one direction, and the atom, it did not move off in a direction perfectly opposite to it. Uh, and you can see, uh, in this situation, these two things, they do not cancel. So the total momentum of everything, after our little explosion here, when you add these two things together, they don't cancel. The total momentum does not equal zero. A lot of physicists were losing a lot of sleep over this. How could the law of conservation of momentum be wrong? Zero to start with, not zero to end with. Uh, as I say, a lot of physicists they lost a lot of sleep. Eventually, someone deduced hey, maybe 
there is a smaller particle uh, that is also being emitted and it's so small that we can actually see it okay? and even though no one had seen this particle they were pretty sure that it was there and they actually gave it a name uh, they called it a neutrino and they didn't know very much about a neutrino but they could figure out its momentum so let's see where we're at they had a bunch of unhappy physicists uh, momentum is equal to zero at the start not equal to zero at the end uh, so they deduced smaller particle, in other words, a neutrino. Must exist. And if the neutrino was going to exist, they could figure out its momentum. Watch this. Remember, our atom is moving off in this direction with a certain momentum. Our electron is moving off in this direction uh, with a certain momentum. And there's also a neutrino that's moving off in some weird direction who knows how uh, in here. Uh, what do we know about this neutrino? Well, how about this? Remember, the total momentum of everything before was zero, so the total momentum of everything after must also be zero. So the total momentum of everything must be zero. The momentum of the atom plus the momentum of the electron, plus the momentum of this mystery particle that we don't really know where it is quite yet. The momentum of the neutrino, added on to the other two, has got to give you a zero. So, let's do this vector addition here. Watch this, I'm gonna draw a vector diagram. Okay. Uh, first, I'm gonna put on the momentum of the atom. Okay, there it is, just like so. Then I'm going to add on the momentum of the electron. Okay, I'm going to pick it up, drop it down, tip the tail, there's the momentum of the electron. And remember, the momentum of the neutrino, when you add it on, everything's got equal to zero. So, add on the momentum of the neutrino tip to tail and of course if the resultant is going to be zero it's going to wind up back where you started from so from drawing this little vector diagram just from a little bit of high school physics the physicists knew well if the atom goes this way and the electron goes this way well the neutrino it's got to be going off In that direction okay. uh, so they still hadn't seen one of these neutrinos but they were pretty sure that it's got to be there all they had to do was just devise a test that could prove its existence so uh, here's what they did They surrounded their clown chamber uh, with something like 
a TV screen. You know, when a TV, a TV screen, uh, at least from an older TV, when an electron hits it, it lights up. Well, this is the same kind of idea. They surrounded their cloud chamber with a detection screen. Very, very sensitive. If anything runs into it, it lights up. And of course, they had their uh, atom sitting there and it emitted an electron and the atom goes off this way. The electron goes off this way. And the neutrino, if it's going to be emitted, it's going to go off in this direction. In other words, it's going to go off in this direction. It's going to hit the detector somewhere up there. Well, they let this happen, and yeah, the atom went off with a momentum like this. The electron went off with a momentum like this. And sure enough, they couldn't see the neutrino, like it didn't form a condensation trail inside the cloud chamber. But sure enough, okay, the detection screen uh, lit up right there. Uh, and yeah, there was uh, much rejoicing in physics land. Physicists were having wild parties uh, all, all over the place uh, because the fact that this detection screen lit up exactly where they said it should light up, well, they knew the neutrino must exist. Uh, And yeah, this is, this is a perfect example of something very high tech, the discovery of neutrinos, uh, depending on something very, very basic, like the law of conservation of momentum. With a few vectors, mind you, but still, just the law of conservation of momentum. Uh, so there's no assignment associated with this. Uh, we'll let you uh, mull this over. We'll let you uh, mull over uh, everything else you've got so far. Uh, tomorrow I will post another video on the vector nature of momentum and in it uh, we're gonna solve a problem. We're gonna haul out the vector diagrams and start figuring some things out. Uh, we will see you then.